Hey, welcome to the Back with Gourmet. Today, we're going to unbox and try out a couple of outdoor cooking accessories from Camp Made. So y'all stay tuned. <music> So today we're going to try out the uh, charcoal and wood holder from Camp Made right here. Still in the box. Nice folks over at Camp Made sent these over to us to, uh, to uh, show to you guys. And we also have the uh, flip grill right there. And we already unboxed this one, but we have the uh, good old uh, Dutch oven lid lifter, lid stand combination tool here. We're going to use all three of these together and we're going to grill up some T-bone steaks. So there's not a lot to unbox on this uh, this grill here. We just cut these zip ties off. And, you know, I use my knife at work every day, so it's pretty dull. And those zip ties are pretty, pretty strong. So that comes off of there real, real cool like that. Not a whole lot to it. Pretty simple. Let's set that aside. And we have our uh, charcoal and wood holder. This is uh, shrink wrapped, comes shrink wrapped, so we'll cut that loose. We can get this bad boy out of here. Wrap pretty well. And we'll pull it out of the box. This one does come with uh, some instructions here, so. We'll look that over. And then inside there, this is uh, nicely packed in a plastic bag. So I did pre-read some of the instructions on that. And it says, uh, first thing you do is pull these handles out. It makes it easier to use. And it's spring-loaded. All right, that? so there's a couple of ways this can be used. This can be used without the lid stand. And you could just put your grill right down over the top of the charcoal holder just like that okay it has this uh notch here for your handles it fits right there okay so it'll it'll sit pretty level this it's not not a perfect uh sit down on there but oh i got it on the handles there it goes so now it sits on there nice and level just like that or you can use it with a lid stand and I'll show you how to assemble that real quick before, you know, we get any kind of coals on. So we got our lid stand upside down. This is important. Must be upside down. The first thing you want to do is um, adjust these legs in, you know, right here. You want to adjust these legs in until it holds your grill uh, nice and level. Then you bring this uh, spring clamp up from the bottom. There's a hook right here. See this hook right here? Okay, we want this hook from the bottom to hook into that. So we'll line it up with the hook and put some pressure up on the spring, the spring down here, till it raises up and catches the hook right here. Okay, now that grill is that grill is holding there. There's it is really holding. And these little uh, these pads is where you want this prong up under here to land. Okay. See this one here? Eh, that's wrong. Okay? Wrong. So it's kind of spring loaded, so you can kind of just lift up on it, pull that leg out, and make sure it lands in that little pad, and that will hold your grill reasonably level. All right. So we got that part. Now, here for the charcoal pan, we pulled these handles out. They retract for easier shipping. You pull those out to full length, it gives you more leverage because this is spring loaded just like just like pac-man okay all right so there are notches inside here i don't know if you can see those or not that line up with the notches on that center bar so what we're going to do is we're going to open it up just enough and you can clamp it on to, and it falls into those notches. I think I kind of have it the wrong way. It probably should go from this side, 
That way they are more exactly line up. Now what we can do is we can raise or lower our fire depending on what we're cooking. Okay. So if you want to know if you've done this correctly, each one of your legs is marked with the number. That one's number two. Okay. A little pad that's resting on under here. If you flip this under over, hopefully you can see, maybe not. That's also stamped with a number two. So you want the leg numbers to match the pad opening numbers there. And that'll make sure it's all aligned correctly when you put it together. So we got some uh, charcoals going over there already. We got some T-bone steaks ready to go. So let's get after some cooking. So our side for what we're going to grill today, some T-bone steaks. It's going to be some uh, fried potatoes. So what we got here is this is simple. This is this is redneck, you know, cooking at or backwoods cooking at its finest. This is an old uh, grate I had from an old gas grill. I'm going to lay that right on top of some coals there. And that's just going to keep those coals uh, breathing real nice. That's the camp made coconut charcoal by the way. And we're going to put one of our good old antique number 10 antique three notch lodge on there and a modern cover on it. Let that uh, start getting warmed up. And then we'll use the rest of our coals for the grilling process. I know you guys have seen us doing uh, quite a bit of product reviews. Um, to be quite honest with you, the channel's growing like crazy. We start getting a little bit of attention. People are sending us stuff to try out. Now, just because they send us stuff to try out, that doesn't mean that we're automatically going to tell you, hey, this is the greatest thing uh, since a Dutch oven. So we moved over that charcoal tray. And we're going to go ahead and fill that up. This is a uh, camp made coconut charcoal. Now, I don't know necessarily that coconut charcoal is gonna emit a lot of flavor into our meat, but you can always put some wood chips on there and we have some standing by. So let's go ahead and get this ready to start preheating our grill. So we brought over the setup with the lid lifter and all that yada. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead, ease that under there and clamp it on that center shaft. Get it over here where we can get at it and let it start getting our grill hot. Now I do smell, you know, this is a right out of the box unit. So I'm smelling a little bit of that paint burning on that thing. So we'll let that uh, smell subside for sure before we ever put our T-bone. So I, I like me some onions with my potatoes. So let's go right out here to our little micro farm. Check out the onion patch. It's right down there. These are what we call here in Florida strawberry onions. They're really a Dividelia strain uh, onion, but they commonly planted around strawberry fields to keep the deer from eating the strawberries. So we plant them in winter and they get uh, ready in spring. In spring and they're looking awesome. So let's find a nice one with a nice top because I like the tops on mine to go in those fried potatoes. So right there, you see this one's starting to get kind of floppy. That means that the top's ready to fall on it and might not be quite as crisp. We don't need it to be huge. Let's just try this one right here. Now that's fresh onion. We'll get them cleaned up and ready for the pan. 
So this is what a uh, freshly picked strawberry onion looks like. Some parts of the country you might call this a spring onion, but we call it a strawberry onion. And believe me, it is delicious. We're going to slice this bad boy up and get it ready to go in them potatoes. So those potatoes are browned up very nicely, most of them. So we're going to go ahead and sprinkle in just the bulb part of the strawberry onion. And we'll use the green top as a garnish for the whole dish at the end. But, you know, if you're just cooking onion, you can cook the green the bulb all at once. A little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and you're good to go. So we waited to this point to put the onions in because there are a lot of sugar in these. They're very sweet, and they will uh, burn on you before you can cook the potatoes. So you want to put them in like the last five or six minutes. Okay, so we've got our charcoals ready and we're about ready to, to uh, get ready to grill, but we need to raise this up. And these handles got a little, I don't know, silicone or plastic grip on them. Those things are hot. You can't touch that. No way. All right. Never mind support the weight of the charcoal and lift it up using these little thingies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a hot pad. And then I'm going to take my uh, good old lid lifter. I'm going to stick it through one of the holes. We'll open that up enough. And we're going to raise it up to about two inches below the grill. And let that get hot. We put our uh, little six inch cast iron pan over here on what coals are left over the rack. I'm gonna melt three pats of butter in that pan real quick. It's gonna be a sauce for our steak. So into that, we're gonna put about a tablespoon of cilantro, fresh, and some of those tops from the strawberry onions finely sliced just gonna let that uh, sweat for a minute and we'll pull it off and then we can put that right on top of our steak which is going very slowly right now all right guys time for the plate I'm gonna go over here some of our uh, beautiful fried potatoes right in there and we're coming over for uh, our T-bone steak. Nestle that guy right there. Then we have some of our butter, cilantro, and sweet strawberry onion sauce right over the top there. Tell you what, that looks pretty daggone good. try to do this uh, same thing again and recommend that you guys try to what we just did with the try to do some steep t-bone steaks on this thing uh, no no um, just it's hard to get it hot due to the fact that there's limited airflow here um, 
but these these items may work great individually but in the combination the camp made shows you, you know, how to do it here and you know following their directions um, don't try these steaks on this maybe you know if you're gonna do some bratwurst something that takes a little slower cook time it may work fine for other things but just not what we did here today <laughs> Thanks for watching Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there to see another great Backwoods Gourmet episode. It's going to be right up here. And for a whole playlist of outdoor cooking product reviews, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.